similar to making music, when it comes to sound design, there really aren't any rules. What's up guys, Barry here. And if it's your first time on the channel, we talk about hip hop, beat making, and general music production. So if that's your thing, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. With that said, in today's video, we're gonna make some drum sounds using Native Instruments Massive X. And although there are no rules to sound design, there are some basic building blocks that you should know and understand to get you started. So with that said, let's start off with something really easy, which is an 808. So to show you guys how easy it is to make drum sounds inside a Massive X, we'll be starting off each example with a blank slate. And the first thing we're gonna do is adjust our voicing. So we're gonna change the polyphony from poly to mono. And we're gonna change our engine setup from free run to reset all. And the reason we set it to reset all is because we want a consistent sound behavior every time the synth is triggered by a MIDI note. From there, we're gonna go to the routing page to grab our ingredients for our 808. And for a basic 808, we only need an oscillator. So we're gonna grab the output of our oscillator and drag it to the input of our stereo effects. From there, we change the wavetable position to a sine wave. Without doing anything else, it sounds like this. So let's pitch it down two octaves, so minus 24 to get to that sub 808 that we want. From there, we're going to adjust the length of our 808. So in the amp envelope, we're going to bring the sustain all the way down. And for finer details, you can adjust the decay to your liking. So without any audio effects, it sounds great the way it is. But let's take it up a level and add some pitch modulation. So we're going to grab E2 and drag it to the first pitch slot of our wavetable. We'll pitch it up 12 semitones and let's see what that sounds like. And let's bring that decay down for a more subtle modulation. And lastly, let's do a before and after. Where an 808 uses an oscillator, a hi-hat is the opposite. It uses a noise generator. So once again, we'll start with our voicing. So we're gonna change the polyphony from poly to mono. And for our hi-hat, we're not gonna use an oscillator. Instead, we're gonna use a noise generator. So for the same reasons we wanted that consistent sound, we're gonna change our noise from free to one shot. And similar to our 808, our hi-hat only really needs one ingredient, which is a noise generator. So we route it to our stereo effects. We'll bring its volume up and we get this. To get it to sound more like a hi-hat, we adjust its amp envelope. So let's bring the sustain down all the way and the decay down quite a bit. Cool, so that's pretty much your basic hi-hat. Let's take it up a level and layer on our second noise generator. So again, we'll go back into routing. We'll drag the second noise generator output to our stereo effects. Make sure you go back into voice and adjust its engine from free to one. And you can just blend in your second noise generator as you see fit. What I like about Massive X is that there's so many options under the noise tab. So let's go through a few and see what we like. By the way guys, down in the description there's a link to some free drum sounds that you can grab that I made using these techniques in Massive X. Alright, so let's take what we learned from the 808 and the hi-hat and combine those to make a snare drum. The ingredients for a basic snare drum is an oscillator and a noise generator. And as far as waveforms, you can experiment with different shapes. But for this example, we'll go back to that basic sine wave. When it comes to blending your two sources, you wanna have less oscillator and more of your noise generator. From there, we go back to our envelope. We'll bring sustain all the way down and you'll bring down the decay to how long or how short you want your snare. Let's go back to our wavetable and experiment with some different waveforms. versus a kick and a hi-hat, you have more options to play with pitch. And if we're to pitch it up, 
For less tone, bring the wavetable volume down. Cool, so that's your basic snare drum. Let's take it up another level. Similar to our hi-hat, let's layer on another noise generator. So again, we'll bring the output of that second noise generator to the stereo effects. We'll bring the volume up. As far as noise source goes, let's check out the transient menu and we can go to stick. Let's mute that first noise to see what this sounds like. And we can adjust the pitch. All right, cool. So on Massive X, on the most right, you'll see X, Y, and Z. Those are your stereo effects. So let's pull up an EQ to further shape our sound. So we can cut some of those lows. Let's bring up some of the mids. And let's get rid of some of that buzz by cutting some of the highs. Similar to how an 808 and a hi-hat are opposites, a snare drum and a kick drum are opposites as well. With a kick drum being the same as a snare drum, they have the same ingredients. So an oscillator and a noise generator. And for this example, let's introduce F. F being our filter. So the output of our oscillator as well as the output of our noise generator go to the input of our filter. And the filter's output goes to the input of our stereo effects. Now to our wavetable, we'll go back to that sine wave. As far as pitch goes, we'll go to a fixed tuning, which defaults our pitch to 60 or middle C. So let's drag that down to around 36. And tuning wise, that'll be a B2. Moving to our noise generator, we said that the kick drum is the opposite of the snare drum. So this time we'll have less noise to oscillator. And similar to our other sounds, we go to the amp envelope, bring the sustain down, and we'll adjust the decay to our liking. Cool. And similar to the 808, we can introduce some pitch modulation. So we'll grab E2 and drag it to the first pitch modulation slot. From there, we can increase the pitch a few semitones. From there, you reduce the decay for E2. And for more control and a tighter sound, you can have E2 so your second envelope control the volume of your noise generator. And although white noise is the standard, you can always play around with different noise tables. Now let's bring in our filter to start shaping the frequencies of our kick. So the filter shaped our highs and our mids. Let's bring in an EQ and bump some of those lows. All right guys, so that's a quick tutorial on the basics of drum design using Native Instruments Massive X. Down in the comments, let me know if you want to see me do more sound design videos in the future. And with that said, hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already and happy beat making. Peace.